The Shanidar V cranium is one of the most intriguing fossils from the late middle to early upper Pleistocene of the Near East because it sits morphologically at the crossroads between classic Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens. When researchers have compared it to other important fossils from the caves of Zutia, Arago, and School, the picture that emerges is far more complex than a simple Neanderthal versus modern human divide. It shows that Shanidar V could represent either a late, slightly atypical Neanderthal that overlaps with early modern human morphology, or a hybrid individual from a contact zone where these two lineages met. Shanidar V was discovered in 1960 by Ralph Solecki in the Shanidar cave of northern Iraq. The partial skeleton belonged to an adult male, estimated to have been between 35 and 50 years old, and it showed clear evidence of trauma, including a 5 mm scar on the frontal bone just left of midline, likely the result of a scalp wound. This fits with the pattern at Shanidar, where several individuals show healed injuries, suggesting both a hazardous life and social care. Chronologically, Shanidar V dates to somewhere between about 70,000 and 40,000 years ago, just before or overlapping with the arrival of early modern humans in the Levant. A crucial reason Shanidar V draws so much debate is the shape of its frontal and zygomatic bones, the very parts of the face that most clearly differentiate Neanderthals and modern humans. A landmark geometric morphometric study measured 291 points across the frontal and zygomatic regions of dozens of fossils and recent humans. They found that Shanidar V actually falls within the range of modern human variation in frontal and zygomatic shape. This is striking because most Neanderthals cluster away from modern humans in this part of the skull. In their principal component analysis, Shanidar V plotted among modern humans, not with the archaic groups, even though it retains some typical Neanderthal facial features, such as mid-facial projection. Its unusual frontal bone, very flat for a Neanderthal, was initially suspected to have been altered by cranial deformation, but later reconstruction work showed this is most likely just individual or regional variation, rather than artificial modification. The study also compared the older, middle Pleistocene Zutia fossil from Israel, which preserves the frontal and right zygomatic. Zutia, dated between about 500,000 and 200,000 years ago, sits geographically at the same corridor between Africa and Eurasia, where hominin populations likely met and mixed. Zutia was found to be morphologically most similar to three fossils. Shanidar V, Arago 21 from France, often classed as Homo heidelbergensis sensulatu, and Skull, an early Homo sapiens from the Levant. This finding is important because it means Shanidar V's face is not uniquely Neanderthal, but shares a generalized pattern that may go back to a common population ancestral to both Neanderthals and modern humans. When the scientist computed nearest neighbor distances in shape space, Shanidar V was Zutia's closest match, even closer than Skull. They noted that shape differences between archaic groups such as Homo heidelbergensis and Homo neanderthalensis in this facial region are subtle. The discriminant analysis often classified fossils inconsistently. Shanidar V was sometimes pulled toward Homo erectus or heidelbergensis because of its flat frontal, while Arago 21 was misclassified as Neanderthal. This shows that the frontal and zygomatic region does not always neatly divide the lineages. Still, modern humans as a group were statistically distinct from all archaic groups, and the fact that Shanidar V sits within modern human variation suggests a real mosaic pattern. Interestingly, behind the huge brow ridges and the sloping forehead, the Neanderthal brain is not very different in shape than modern humans. The large brow ridge and forward jutting face make the forehead look very sloped, but in reality, the frontal region of the Neanderthal brain is the same size as modern man. Older studies had also noticed Shanidar V's ambiguous nature. Some researchers originally grouped Near Eastern fossils like Tabun, Skul, and Amud with Neanderthals, while others suggested transitional or mixed populations. Others, however, argued that Zutia, and by extension other Levantine fossils, linked East and West Asian archaic humans, challenging a simple out-of-Africa replacement model.
Some workers considered Zutia transitional between Homo erectus and the Levantine modern humans of Skul and Kafza, while others have proposed that these fossils belong to a single evolving West Asian population with gene flow between Africa and Eurasia. Yet other proponents of the assimilation model have long suggested that Neanderthals and modern humans interbred in this corridor, leaving a genetic legacy confirmed by ancient DNA. The Zutia Shanidar school connection matters because Zutia predates the clear Neanderthal sapien split, but already shows the generalized face shape both lineages later inherited. The analysis shows that Neanderthals largely retained this ancestral morphology, while recent modern humans diverged from it. Shanidar V, though chronologically late, seems to have kept more of that older, generalized shape than most European Neanderthals, which have become more derived with heavier brow ridges and mid-face projection. Its flat, frontal, and overall facial proportions blur the boundaries. However, Shanidar V bears a striking resemblance to the skull from Guattari Cave in Italy, also dated to around 50,000 years ago. This may indicate a close relationship between the Italian and Mesopotamian Neanderthals of this time. One interpretation is that Shanidar V could represent a Neanderthal with some gene flow from incoming Homo sapiens, which would explain its placement within modern human facial variation. The Near East was precisely where such contact is thought to have occurred. Ancient DNA shows that modern humans carry 1 to 4% Neanderthal ancestry from interbreeding events likely in this region around 50,000 to 60,000 years ago. Although no DNA has yet been sequenced from Shanidar V itself, its morphology fits the idea of a contact zone where hybrids or introgressed Neanderthals could appear. Another view is that Shanidar V does not require admixture to explain its face. It may simply preserve a primitive, less derived Neanderthal condition, while European Neanderthals became more specialized. Its unusual flat frontal bone may exaggerate this impression, but still lies within the Neanderthal range. The Levantine Neanderthals, including Amud and Tabun, as well as Shanidar, are sometimes described as less robust and slightly more modern in their faces compared with their European cousins. This could reflect population structure within Neanderthals rather than hybridization. Yet the overlap with early Homo sapiens such as Skull is striking. Skull itself has often been described as archaic or proto-modern, retaining brow ridge size and mid-facial projection more than recent humans. In the shape analyses, school plotted between Neanderthals and modern humans. That Shanidar V overlaps with it suggests these two populations, late Neanderthals and early moderns, shared a broadly similar craniofacial template. If they were interbreeding, it is reasonable to expect such convergence. Contextual evidence also supports a porous boundary. Archaeology at Shanidar Cave and nearby sites shows Musterian technology associated with Neanderthals, but also transitional industries at the time modern humans entered the region. Genetic models indicate low but real admixture events, and the Near East's position as a corridor between Africa and Eurasia made it a mixing zone throughout the Pleistocene. Taken together, Shanidar V appears less like a textbook European Neanderthal and more like a Near Eastern hominin whose face retains an ancestral morphology close to both early modern humans and earlier middle Pleistocene populations like Zutier and Arago. Whether this means Shanidar V was a hybrid or simply an archaic Neanderthal variant cannot be answered definitively without ancient DNA, but its craniofacial shape sits comfortably in the spectrum where such mixing would show. Its flat frontal bone and generalized mid-face suggest a retained primitive pattern, but the overlap with Homo sapiens metrics hints that introgression is at least plausible. This makes Shanidar V a key fossil for understanding human evolution in the Levant. It shows how our taxonomic labels blur when populations were connected by geography and climate-driven migration. The fact that a late Neanderthal can fall within modern human facial variation illustrates that the Neanderthal sapiens boundary was not absolute. Shanidar V could represent a Neanderthal lineage retaining primitive traits, a hybrid individual reflecting admixture, or both at once, a Neanderthal genetically touched by modern humans but still culturally and anatomically rooted in its own people. In sum, 
Shanidar V embodies the fascinating enigma highlighted in studies of Zutia and other middle to late Pleistocene fossils. It is morphologically closest to Zutia, Arago, and Skull, fossils that themselves mark transitional or ancestral conditions between archaic and modern humans. Its craniofacial shape falls within modern human variability even as it retains Neanderthal heritage. This mosaic of traits is exactly what we would expect in a region where our species met and mingled with its closest relatives. Whether we label Shanidar V a Neanderthal, a hybrid, or an archaic sapiens, its face tells the story of deep connections across the human family just before the Neanderthals disappeared. Please click on these other videos to continue to explore our human journey.